You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR-FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, How many hours a day do you write, and on average, how long does it take you to write a book? And today to answer, we have on Brad Dunn, author of After Dark Vapors. Uh, How many hours a day do you write, or how long on average does it take you to finish a novel? I think ideally I'd like to spend three hours a day writing, uh, like just pure uninterrupted writing. Um, And then I took, all said and done, I would say if you took all the like stops and pauses when I wrote After Dark Papers and you condensed it, it probably took me about a year to write it. That's fair. Yeah. That's a good length of time. Yeah. Yeah. That means you can write approximately 20 before you uh before you kick the bucket because we're authors we'll go young <laughs> yeah it's, it's funny yeah. eh? when yeah. you think about like how many you got in you yeah you know it's that's that's soul destroying when you start <laughs> counting down from like how many you've got left yeah and you question all the days last year you spent not writing yeah you probably a uh, good idea to start carrying around like a memento mori or something to yeah. remind yourself you know like uh, I'm 30 years old now, so I mean, if I got to 70, that's 40 years. Yeah. You know, you do the math. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, dear. Not enough books left. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. then maybe we'll find some kind of cure at all our diseases. Yeah. You know, by the time we get that age. Or you'll get big and be able to do more than one a year like King, where he can just sit <sighs> there and just yeah. churn them out. Yeah, I feel like that's almost the opposite problem. <laughs> where, where without ever once thinking of an ending. Yeah, and that guy, he, uh, I wish he'd spend some more time editing. I do. As well. I, I love, I love I Stephen love King, him. but man, like I read his most recent novel, uh, The Outsider. Yeah, and it's like I'm just like, man, you need an editor. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I guess there's no one. Can you? I mean, you're you do some editing work. Yeah. You've you've done some work for us even yeah. over so far, and we're gonna get you to more soon because it was wonderful. But. Um, it's got to be hard to edit King at this point. Like, can you imagine yeah. if you got hired to do that right now? Like, how do you say to King, you know, maybe all your characters don't need to be authors? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much repetition in this novel. I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine anyone didn't realize that. Yeah. He's writing for a major publisher. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming they have great editors. One would hope. Ooh. Like, why isn't anyone saying, hey, you don't need to repeat this for the fourth time? I think the reader understands the yep. plot. Like, And it's the same when I read uh, George R. R. Martin. It's like, is there no one telling you to, like... You don't need to describe this every down, single man. meal? Like, yeah, you don't... I know you have this nice reference material you want to show off, but, like, you don't need to spend a whole page describing Tywin Lannister's armor. Yeah. You know, like, totally interrupting the battle. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it's, it is a major issue with uh, with both of them. So is it, like, that's what I would love to know, is that, like, is it that these publishers are afraid of their authors? Is it that the authors don't want to hear it? Like... I don't know. Maybe. Um, it's entirely possible. There's also some... I mean, once someone sold... A, a you know, hundreds of millions of copies doing one style, yeah. then it's like, well, clearly it works, so let's not mess with it. Yeah, Even if that's a good point. Too. Realistically, yeah, like you can find flaws in it. Yeah, yeah, because at the end of the day, the editors are employed by the publisher, and the publisher just wants to make the money. Yeah, yeah. I almost wonder if it, that's more of it is that we don't want to accidentally kill the golden goose. Yeah, it's like. Stephen King, just just let him off the leash. Mm-hmm. Let him just write whatever nonsense he wants to write. There's that, there's that famous Family Guy thing where he's like, it's a killer lamb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, there was a story, I remember someone asked him, I, maybe it was about that Family Guy episode, 
And they said, you know, it's one of those, like, where do you get your ideas? Yep. And there was a story where he's like, he's like, I, I was washing the dishes, and I thought, what would happen if a finger just started coming out of the sink? Yeah. And I wrote a story about it. Yeah. And it's like, the guy tries to cut the finger off. And like, all of a sudden, it's like, that's how he writes, you know? Yeah. And it's just, uh, I feel like he is totally, there's no block between what his brain says and what his hand does yeah it's just pure output yeah like it just goes out you know which is admirable in oh, a yeah. way yeah but in a, like if i had that image of like the finger coming up i and i'm not saying i'm better than king by any stretch of the imagination right but that would be something that i would file away and i would put in a story like yeah. in a larger story with better with themes and stuff like that i do yeah. a thing where the character has an anxiety dream and that's the anxiety dream and yeah. i would put all that same cool imagery and stuff like that in there but yeah, yeah. but you know it's it, it's hard to criticize because he's he's him you know what if I mean? you if you're a if you don't like the kind of stuff that stephen king writes and you want to be a writer i would still suggest reading stephen king because it should embolden you to just chase whatever insane idea that pops into your head see, and I'm, see where it goes. I like, wrote my thesis on The Dark Tower. I mean, right. there's as much as I find flaws with a lot of his work, that's one thing that I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. This is everything. Like, my favorite Stephen King book will always be It, because it was such a special... Like, I read it at such a like special time in my life that yep. it really, like... Uh, and like I read, I think I was like thirteen or fourteen years old, and feeling like I've never read anything like this. Yeah, I didn't know you were allowed to write this kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like the, the the real book will never be turned into a movie. Well, or a it TV can't show. be for a couple, a few scenes. <laughs> really can't be. There's one. I mean the the infamous like the, we know the scene. The infamous scene that I'm sure people know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but there's other stuff like uh, like crazy parents getting possessed by Pennywise and throwing their baby in the toilet. Yeah. Like, that's, like, you could never put that on television. No. Nope. You could never put that on screen. Like, like American Horror Story pushes the envelope. They'll never have something like that on it. No. You know? And, you know, and, and that other scene included, it's like, you could never write that unless you just turned off that inner editor in your brain by the same... And it's like... You know, that obviously goes too far, but then I feel like that, at the same time, that brings with it all the great scenes with Pennywise and, and all the great stuff that, that King does. But, you know, it, it would be nice if you had an editor every now and then be like, well, maybe, maybe you don't need to do this. Maybe we don't need that. <laughs> Steven, did you think of an ending before you started <laughs> writing your ending? Yeah. Have you ever read Needful Things? No. Oh my lord, the ending of Needful Things. Read it just for the, like, because you're, I mean. That's a newer one, right? No, that was uh, late 80s, or early oh, okay. 90s. But it was, um, uh, when you're writing, I mean, or sorry, when you're watching a movie or reading a book, you can't help but your, your brain has a predictive nature to it. Right. So you see things happening, and you guess, okay, based on the dominoes that have started to fall, Here's where I think's going to go. Right. Yeah. And in a good novel or a very well written novel, then there'll be a twist at the end, but the dominoes it'll still have a cause and effect motion yeah. where it's like, oh, this the ending still makes sense. It's just not what you thought was going to happen. Yeah. King's endings, man, <laughs> is just like set the dominoes up, set them going. At the end, completely ignore the dominoes, get it your chest set. <laughs> yeah. He uh, he's he's got a thing about endings. I've I've seen a lot of interviews where he talks about uh, like endings. Yep. I know that um, oh, what's this, the guy who wrote like Cider House Rules? Yep. John Irving, I think his name is. Yep. Well, Irving, I think Irving writes his endings first. Sounds like a good way to do it. And Stephen King apparently thinks that's like absolute blasphemy. Like he's like I save my endings till I get to them. Which is probably why they're so crazy. <laughs> he doesn't save them, though. Yeah. They just, he's like, well, I guess this book's done now. <laughs> yeah. On to the next one. Like, like Needful Things, spoilers, ends with uh, a sheriff making shadow puppets to scare the devil out of town. Right. <laughs> like, he just, apropos of nothing, just yeah. makes a, a dog as a shadow puppet. And the devil runs away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then there's the stand with, like, the hand of God and stuff. And, <sighs> yeah, that was ill-advised. There's so much that's ill-advised. <laughs> um, thank you very much. 
Next on the line, we have Jed McKay, a storied author for Marvel Comics of all places. He has written three volumes of his ongoing series, Black Cat, a spin-off of the popular Spider-Man franchise. He's also currently writing Taskmaster, a villain series focused on the villain from the upcoming Black Widow movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And he's written short fiction for Dystopia from the Rock. Uh, Jeff McKay, how many hours a day do you write on average? Oh, honestly, it depends on the day. Um, also, I mean, it depends. It's like mining, you know, sometimes you, you're you scrambling and hustling. You can only get uh, a few nuggets. Other times you tap into a rich seam, you can just go all day. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, I think it's just varied so wildly. There's, you know, there's days I don't get any writing done just because of you know i have other things i need to do i have chores got stuff i gotta take care of uh other days i'll i'll work basically all day okay. awesome sounds good sounds i i know that story yeah for sure <laughs> thank you very much next up we have ellen curtis who is the author of the infinity series from engine books as well as the editor of the from the rock anthology how long does it take you to write a novel, or alternatively, how many words do you write per day? It takes me too long to write a novel. Too long. Okay. I've had some really productive days in my past. Like, I have had, on occasion, 10,000 word days. Wow. But it's like a miracle. And that's like when I've really plotted stuff out really, really well. Uh, other days, it's like, help me. Help mm. me get out like this sentence. I hear you. Yep, I hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Matthew Daniels, frequent contributor to the From the Rock series, as well as the author of the upcoming novel, Diary of Knives. Uh, Matthew Daniels, how many hours a day do you write? Or what is your writing schedule like? Well, uh, like a lot of writers, I have the, the curse of the day job and, you know, all that adulting stuff that goes on. So uh, it's, a, it's not right necessarily a good fit to, say, carve out the same hours every day and this sort of thing. So it, some of it comes down to seizing opportunities when I get them. Um, some some scheduled days, like if I'm working uh, towards the evening, that gives me the morning to write. Um, or I'll do it on a weekend day. Or um, you know, I've been taking a bit of leave of absence from work in the last couple of months to squeeze in more time. Um, so it's just kind of, I mean, this is the struggle that a lot of writers face where it's as much of a, a hunt for opportunity as it is a straight up structure. But I try to gun for an average of an hour or so a day, uh, regardless of what else is going on. So if I don't get in for a couple of days and I got a day off, I might squeeze in three or four hours that day and try to like, you know, level off the average. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. So that's. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I try to do, like, uh, instead of time, I try to do word count. So, like, if I'm really on my game and I get 2,000 words done in half an hour, I'm like, cool, that's it for today. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, I have a big elaborate system for it because uh, there I've are seen some your calendar. things I find. You have, like, this um, calendar where, at least when, when I knew you, when I saw it, you were, um... You, you would track, like, writing, reading, and editing, and, like, make yourself do so much a day. Do you still do that? No. Uh, that one, I, that approach I've sw uh, switched out a bit because I also added, like, working on my development of French fluency yes. and personal goals like this. So what ended up happening was I needed a minimum of something like four to six letters on, on each square of day on the block of the calendar. So you ended up with like a constant mad dash to continuously catch up with myself. Yeah. And it was. And you can't punish just, yourself for not doing the goals. You can't say, well, now I've got to read 20,000 hours of French stuff. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Like it just takes the joy out of life. And I was, I got burnt out doing that. So I ended up swapping it out a bit where it's more about recording what I have accomplished than setting some arbitrary top of the hill. Because when you set the arbitrary top of the hill, it's hard to uh, make allowances for floods and winds, so to speak, to, to carry the metaphor. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. I do have, uh, now I use a file on my computer and I still have this system of letters that I use for like, if I spent a bunch of time arranging my notes or uh, doing a lot of research on certain topics or ed editing something for submission, I have different designations for all of that so that when I look at my record and it shows that I've done the equivalent of an hour or two of work, that doesn't necessarily mean that I've got another a uh, thousand words towards the next book that's going to be published, but it's still time that had to be done and it is progress and it's important to, you know, give yourself that. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next up, we have comic author Peter Bro. Uh, how many hours a day do you write or how long does it, on average, does it take you to finish a project? I I would say that I prob the uh, I probably write uh, one maybe two hours a day. I'm always thinking about it. Like I'm always you know tossing over ideas in my head, and I carry around uh, uh, like a notebook, you know. And and like I'm the old fashioned way to write. I write it on paper, you know. I, I like my brother does all of his on on his phone. Yeah. And I I do all mine on paper. So whenever I got an idea, I just jot it down and and you know so that I, I can come back and look at it but I spend yeah probably about an hour maybe two a day project a lot of times it depends like like you know we talked about that CBC project that's that's been a year and a half and that's still in the works right that's still ongoing but like if I was to write like a comic like for say say the next issue of Mississippi zombie yeah right now um, it would probably take me a week to do that because I would, I would plot it out first, you know, and then I would, you know, look at, I'd reread the, the original story, then I would plot out number two, and then I would do some little thumbnail sketches to see how everything fits on the pages, and then I would go on and, and uh, you know, flesh out the story more, know how I'm going to end it. Like I try to, when I try to write a comic book, I try to always have it so that when you're on page one, you want to flip it to page two. Yeah. You know, so I try to make sure that every, you know, the last panel of page one goes into the first panel of page two, if that's the pacing of the story. Sometimes I might change it. Like if the next page is something, some other type of thread that I want to talk about. But yeah, I would say, to write uh, a, a issue for Missi Mississippi Zombie would probably take me about a week. Okay. From start to finish. That's a good turnaround time. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's the thing is is it's only like it's only twelve pages. Yeah. It's not like if I was if I was writing a novel, I'd still be writing now. Hey, the because Origin of Spider-Man was only twelve last pages. Year, I'd still be writing it now because a novel like something like you would write would be what. Three, four, five, six hundred pages. Yeah, yeah. So that's just that's. I'm writing twelve. <laughs> yeah. Well, the origin of Spider-Man was only fifteen pages. Don't knock twelve yeah. pages. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I'm not knocking twelve pages because I can put an awful lot of information in one of those panels. Yeah, exactly. You know? Different medium. Like, like uh, if I was going to describe and, and write in prose one of your panels, like it would take an entire page. Where for you, it's just a panel. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the artist is doing the bulk of the work. I'm just I'm just directing it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Josh Connors. Uh, he is the author of Small Town Queer, both the uh, play and the adaptation. Uh, Josh Connors, how many hours a day do you write? Uh, right now, it's been four, four and a half then I usually take breaks because my brain gets muddy. That's fair. That's a lot of time to be writing. So yeah, that's yeah. That's... I've been, I've been definitely using my uh, my quarantine quite well. 
when it comes to my writing right now. So Good. Good. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Paul Carberry, author of the Zombies on the Rock series from Engine Books. Uh, last one, I think. Uh, how many hours a day do you write, and on average, how long does it take you to write a book? Varies. Uh, sometimes I can write for a half hour, and when I'm done, I'm just, I don't push myself. I don't, like, I do, that's why I set my word count so low. Yeah. So that, like, I pretty much, I'm going to make it even if I'm having a rough day. That's smart. I give that advice to authors all the time. Make it something you can achieve. Right. So I don't want to like push myself so that I'm to the point where I get frustrated or because then you take longer breaks. Yep. And uh, I try to write a novel maybe over the span of a year. Yeah. Uh, especially the first draft takes the longest. Yeah. And uh, But I'm going to do the probably try to write Kakaradon in three months just to see how it turns out. Cool. But then that gives me more time to also get it reworked. And Are you starting this month over uh, NaNoWriMo? I am going to start this month on that, yes. Nice. Yeah, so I'm hoping to have it the first draft completed by the end of the month. Wow, that'd be crazy. Yeah. That'd so, be cool. And that would be the four-month mark yeah. for writing this. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Teresita Jadora. Uh, Teresita, how many hours a day do you write on average? Um, Monday to Friday, because I work eight hours a day and I have weird shifts sometimes. I try to get at least two or three hours in, at least something writing related. If it's not actual writing, then research or editing or something to that effect. Uh, weekends are my best time i usually get anywhere from five to eight hours in on saturday and sunday usually thank you very much next up we have aaron vance editor-in-chief of engine books and the editor of the from the rock anthology series uh how many hours a day do you write or if you'd rather answer it as an editor that's fine how many hours a day do you spend at your craft I've been really bad the last few weeks because You've I'm working... You've been on um, a master's degree. I'm doing my master's, so I'm really bad. I usually average editing... I feel like I usually do roughly five to six hours a week okay. on editing. And then writing... If I'm in the mood, it'll be the same. And if I'm not in the mood, I won't write for a month. But yeah. again, that's not my craft. Yeah. Like editing is. Okay. But I normally... If I'm close to a deadline with editing, it'll be like two to three hours a day for like three days yeah just and then it still gets and then i'm like huh i still have like four days before it's due how about that yeah if you're you're always in before deadline if the book is good i get into it yeah that's fair yeah thank you very much next on the line we have chelsea b author of london calling and christmas mornings how many hours a day do you write uh zero no um it depends on, I I don't write every day. Like, I try to, but, like, let's be honest, I don't. Um, I try to, I, when I write every day, it's normally for a word count, and I can sprint 500 words in 15 minutes on average. So, if I could do that for half an hour a day, I'd be really happy. That's fair. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tenneth Frost, best-selling author of the Immortal Solus series. Tenneth, how many hours a day do you write? Or, if you don't want to answer that, how long on average does it take you to write a book? I will answer both of those, actually. Uh, on an ideal day, I will write for four or five hours. I write when my kids are in school. And how long does it take me to write a book? I would say... From beginning to end, I have a fairly long process with a lot of stage and several other people reading it along the way. So ideally, I have at least six months. Uh, but there's some overlap there, so I might be releasing books more often than that. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Carolyn R. Parsons, author of The Forbidden Dreams of Betsy Elliott. Uh, speaking of, uh, how many hours a day do you write? Or how long on average does it take you to write a book? However we choose to answer or both oh boy see and that's that's interesting eh because it's so it varies so much like my 
the book I did, Charlie Through Canada, which was a special project, I, I drafted that in 16 days. Okay. That was crazy. Like, I just wrote, and I had the time. So I can't draft really quickly if I have to, and if I know the story in my head and I have a good idea. And then and rewrites, of course, come after that. Now, you know, the rewrites, how long they take, is going to depend on how good the draft is. Yeah. Um, but then this book, six years. But now I wasn't working on it the whole six years. You know, I did. I wrote several books. I've got several manuscripts around here that aren't. I've done nothing with that I've written in that those six years. So it really varies. My very first novel, um, 100,000 words, it was 120, and I cut it way back. took me from um, first touch of the keyboard to finished and published six months. Um, and my, you know, poetry book took years because I wrote, the, wrote it over time. Yeah. So you know, it's all, it all depends. I would say that... Um, if all I did was write, and that was my, I would like a good year, draft it out, be able to put it away, let it sit for a little while, because I just read my book as a book for the first time. You know, the last time I looked at the manuscript was in January, and then it was published, and I haven't read it as a book, completely finished, unless I was looking for, you know, when I was editing, well, that's different, right? You're looking for stuff. You're not reading it for entertainment. So I picked it up just a couple of days ago and read it and and I ha- and then it's a totally different book it's like it's not mine as much anymore and I can look at it with new eyes and see you know and I could just and actually I was really pleased that I didn't see a lot that I just kind of read it and it was like oh this is not bad <laughs> this is pretty good I could turn the pages and I'm not looking for the errors or uh, I could have done better here you know how that goes I do um, and and I didn't a lot of that never happens, so that was a good sign. But when I'm writing, I have to do that. I have to put it away. I get blind to everything. I and I know it's not good. But I can't tell you what's wrong with it. Do you know what I mean? Like there's like I need to do something more with this character, but I can't even tell you what I need to do with that character. I just know he's not good enough yet, and I put it away. And then when I pull it out, I see all sorts of possibility because it's it's not in my brain anymore. So I might have to do that two or three times for me to feel like the book has some depth and the characters have some layers. And I, I would like a good year. And uh, But you can you do other things during that period of time, right? So they can overlap. Oh, yeah. You could easily yeah. um, turn yeah. around and, and what's the word I'm looking for? You could you could work on another book in that year during and that's, the break that's kind from of what that I've book. done. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what I've done is I've put it away and then I pull out another and I start doing something else and I might draft that one and then I might put that one away and then I'm and then I might go back to the other one and pull it out and do some rewrites and I might put it away again. That's how I work and everybody does things differently. Um, so I'm always writing. I'm always writing something, but I'm not necessarily working on something anybody's going to see real quickly. Yeah. Um, but that said, I still produce something almost every year. Last year was the first year. I didn't put a book out last year at all. <gasps> um, Shocking, I Carolyn. I put a short story book out in the fall the year before. And then all of last year, I didn't um, publish a book. But, I mean, I did work. But I was I was doing stuff for the paper, and I was working on the novel for Flanker, and uh, I wanted to get that ready for submission. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, and I thought, this is a good home. Flanker, it, sometimes when you're writing stuff, it fits different like, I self-published some. I uh, had a publisher originally, uh, you know, on the mainland. And this book was really my first Newfoundland book. Yeah. And I thought Flanker is a, is a good home for that one. Historical fiction, I mean, you know. It's okay, and, yeah. Um, and so I really wanted to get it out this year, so I kind of focused on it. So this is the year I'm going to finish the Betsy book and send it off to Flanker and kind of apologized and said, it's not what it needs to be, but I'm – you know, but they loved it, and uh, I work with Donna Morrissey, and we got it where I need. She she picked up right away. She says it's almost like you know, and I'd be like, yeah, that's exactly right. I'm not quite sure, and, and you know, just having someone to talk to who gets it, who writes the same kind of books or similar, um, was very helpful. She was fantastic, and uh, so it's out. It's got, it's out there in the world, and yeah. So yeah, that's I'd like a year for six is too long. I mean, sometimes you might lose. If Betsy wasn't so imprinted on my brain, I might have lost all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, use that momentum a little bit. But, 
yeah, that's a good that's a good pace. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.